Well, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us as we're kicking off this day of worship and celebration, the Lord's Day. And we're so glad that you're here with us on our online campus. We hope that you can enjoy this Mass, share it around with those in your inner circle and those in your outer circle, share it with whoever. Uh, and we're really glad that you're with us today. Yeah, we really encourage you to share it because we want to share the good news of Jesus Christ to everyone that, uh, that we possibly can. So be sure to do that. Now, in regards to uh, this, uh, this past Friday, the government of Ontario has begun phase three of its reopening initiative. So if you want any updates regarding our part in that, uh, be sure to sign up for The Loop. You can find that on our website, sanofonsis.net. Uh, so you can get more information there or our social media platforms. So as we continue to reopen uh, gradually uh, and you want to know what's going on, just check out those uh, platforms to stay in the loop. And as we're reopening, we're also able to do baptisms and funerals. Uh, so if any of that interests you, please reach out to us. We'd love to talk to you more about options and potential uh, information for that. Um, but for now, let's get into the Mass. From the highest throne to the earth below, you lay down your life for the likes of us. Great is the love of the Savior. From a wounded heart to a life made whole, every human heart will declare as one. Great is the love of the Savior. Jesus, we live for your glory. From the rising sun to the still of night, every waking moment for your delight. Jesus, we live for your glory. Lord of endless light, let your glory the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear friends, thank you for joining us today, wherever you're watching from. We're so glad that you chose to be a part of our celebration this weekend. As we come together to celebrate this Mass, to do so worthily and well, let us take a moment to call to mind our sin and to ask of God's mercy and pardon. Kyrie eleison, Lord have mercy. Christ eleison, Christ have mercy. Kyrie. 
pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you, Lord, whose care is for all people to whom you should prove that you have not judged unjustly. For your strength is the source of righteousness, and your sovereignty over all causes you to spare all. For you show your strength when people doubt the completeness of your power, and you rebuke any insolence among those who know it. Although you are sovereign in strength, you judge with mildness, and with great forbearance you govern us. For you have power to act whenever you choose. Through such works you have taught your people that the righteous must be kind, and you have filled your children with good hope because you give repentance for sins. The word of the Lord. Lord, you are good and forgiving. Lord, Lord you, you are, are good, good and forgiving. forgiving. You, O oh Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call on you. Give ear, O oh Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my cry of supplication. Lord, you, you are, are good, good and, and forgiving. forgiving. All the nations you have made shall come and bow down before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Lord, Lord you, you are, are good, good and, and forgiving. forgiving. But you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give your strength to your servant. Lord, Lord you, are you are good, good and, and forgiving. forgiving. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
of the kingdom. With you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. O Lord. Jesus put before the crowds a parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slave said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds you will uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at the harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we're starting a brand new message series. While preparing this series, we noticed something interesting about the second readings for the rest of the summertime. They were all taken from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. So following that lead, we're taking the next few weeks to go through this book of the Bible to see what kind of wisdom and encouragement we can find there. We're calling our series, When in Rome. To kick off this series, our first passage is a selection of only two verses from the eighth chapter of Romans. Two very short verses, but still there's a lot there to unpack. And so let's start with the first verse and work our way through it. It goes like this. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. So right off the bat, St. Paul makes a statement here that you might not like very much. Ready? You've got weaknesses, and so do I. And we need to overcome them. We can't just strong arm ourselves into it. We need divine intervention. We need help. Because we all have weaknesses, flaws, and, and shortcomings that weigh us down and hold us back, like, like your spiritual Achilles heel, so to speak. And it looks different for everyone. Perhaps your spiritual Achilles is your temper. You blow up or melt down at small stuff and end up doing or saying things that you never really meant to do or say, but hurting other people in the process. Perhaps your spiritual heel is a bad habit, 
or even more seriously, an addiction. Getting out of this cycle seems like an impossible task. You've tried a dozen or more times and you feel like you're still stuck. Or perhaps your spiritual heel is pride. Your life is going pretty good, especially compared to other people, right? Sometimes you wonder why you would need the help of another person or even the help of God, because everything's going just fine, thank you very much. These heels and, and countless others break down our relationship with God and slow down our progress towards holiness, towards becoming a better you. And even in these few examples, we've seen how we're masters at deceiving ourselves. We rationalize bad behavior, right? They deserve it. Or we play the victim. I can't help myself. Or we refuse to accept criticism. Who are you to judge me, right? Or we shift the blame. It's not like I'm murdering people and, and I'm better than them. At least I'm not like them, right? We make it hard for ourselves to overcome weaknesses in any number of ways. That's why the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness, because we desperately need the help of the advocate of the Holy Spirit. So the verse goes on to say, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. Prayer is hard. And I'll be the first one to admit that. And this is coming from a guy with some formal training on how to pray. And one of the main reasons why prayer can be difficult comes from the two different aspects of prayer itself, form and content. The form of prayer is how you pray, whether it's singing or, or praying the rosary, meditating or attending mass. All of these are methods or forms of prayer. But it's hard for some of us to figure out how to enter into these forms, right? Some people feel restricted by certain forms of prayer, or bored, or guilty, or they're worried because they don't feel like they have the right words to say. And it can make prayer feel like a, a pretty intimidating thing. The content of prayer is what you actually pray for. What are you asking God for? Help for ourselves or for others? Guidance, maybe, or some patience, miracles, or an answer, or answers? And how do we know that we're praying about the right things? Are we trying to, to balance our many requests with gratitude, too? It's tricky to figure this all out. And when it comes to these two aspects, form and, and content, our spiritual weaknesses work against us and complicate things even further. Frustration can have us giving up on prayer when it doesn't go perfectly. Shame can have us believing that God is not even going to listen to us if we try to pray. Laziness is brutal. Laziness can demotivate us and make us not even feel like praying. And pride Pride can have us thinking that we don't even need to pray in the first place. Thankfully, though, there is the Holy Spirit. Check this out. We do not know how to pray as we ought, but the very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. The Holy Spirit advocates for the needs that we can't quite articulate because he knows us inside and out. And so while we can get confused or lose our sense of direction in prayer, the Holy Spirit can compensate and correct for what we are lacking. He can balance our natural desires to have our own needs met with fulfilling God's will, which is essential but difficult for us to find on our own. Now, St. Paul goes about explaining how this works. He says, God who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. So the Father searches our heart for what is inexpressible to us, but not unintelligible 
for him. Your deepest desires and longings, ones you don't even know how to put into words, are never too complex or too deep for God to understand. Not at all. Just, just think of a toddler drawing a picture that they want to give to their grandparent. Now, mom is probably going to intervene, writing down some quick descriptions. Like, maybe she'll write tree next to the green blob on the paper. Or happy birthday by the messy shapes and lines and, and whatever might appear there. She will intervene for the toddler to help bridge the gap between the child and the grandparent. And friends, the Holy Spirit does the same for you and me. He turns our prayers and thoughts over to the Father, bridging the gap between our request and our true intentions, and what we actually need and want. So when you are praying throughout this week, and I sure hope you do, just call on the Holy Spirit at the beginning of your prayer. Ask him to get you in touch with your true intentions. And here's a good one. Ask him to teach you how to pray. I know it might seem a bit weird at first, but, but ask him to teach you how to pray. Be surprised how he helps you out. He's the one who can lead us to a deeper connection with God. After all, he is the advocate, the one sent to help us. He can help us get that deeper connection with God, which really is the true answer to all of our prayers. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and of life everlasting. Amen. In the power of the Spirit who helps us to pray rightly, let us call on our God who cares for us that believers in Jesus Christ will know the Lord's kindness in living the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the human family will know the Lord's kindness in all that leads to peace and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we will know the Lord's kindness in the safety of all as we enter into the next phase of COVID-19 reopening. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the poor, the sick, and the persecuted will know the Lord's kindness in their deliverance from suffering. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died, especially Merrill Heffernan, will know the Lord's kindness in everlasting life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all petitions left in the silence of our hearts. And those who ask for our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Wondrous are your deeds, O God, in every time and place. May your will be done in answer to our prayers, so that we may receive your kindness in what we need this day. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. It's your gift that allows us to fulfill our mission of loving God, loving others, and making disciples. So if you would like to make a contribution, a gift uh, to, to this parish, there's a couple of ways that you can do that. If you have envelopes and you'd like to give that way, you can always safely as you're able to, to go to the side of our church. There's a little mail slot, just follow the signs and you can make your gift that way. We also have electronic giving, so you can visit our website at sanglefonsis.net slash give, and you can just follow the links and make your gift that way. We just want to thank you so much in advance for your generosity, and for all of you that have been giving uh, so far, we're just really grateful for your gift. God bless you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever.
history of this why why we come to share the divinity of Christ on himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God you. forever. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death. O Lord, until you come again, O Lord, you come again, O oh Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her chaste spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Alphonsus Liguri, St. Michael the Archangel, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and Daniel our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Miserere nobis. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Miserere nobis. Lamb of God, you take away. Ecce Agnus Dei, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Separated from you, let me never be. From the wicked enemy, defend me. At the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to you, that with your saints I may praise you forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. Hope you have a great day and a blessed week. Know that we love you very much. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us glorify the Lord by our lives. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. my cares aside I'm leaving my past behind I'm setting my heart and mind on you Jesus I'm reaching my hand to yours but leaving there's so much more knowing that all you have in store for me is good day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day you have made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I won't worry about tomorrow. I'm trusting in what you say. Today is the day